Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be an altar setup video. We are switching out my Samhain altar for my Yuletide altar. <music> Now many of you know that I love my seasonal altars. I do them every single Sabbath, or at least I try to, and this season is no different. Now I usually wouldn't set up my Yule altar till probably the first week of December, but all of a sudden in England it's turned into winter, and it just doesn't feel right anymore to have my Samhain altar up. There's something about this very dark, cold time of the year that I just really want to represent it in an altar. And my Samhain altar just didn't feel right. It was covered in orange and pumpkins and all these Halloween decorations. And it snowed last night. So I felt like it was about time to change the altar out, switch it up. Let's get some Yuletide feels going on because I'm currently preparing to put up my Christmas tree on the 1st of December. So it's a really good time to do this. Now these videos do contain some time lapse with some music and I always get asked what the music I use is and I try my best to always list it in the description box and there's other really interesting things in the description box as well such as the link to the podcast and to social media and to my website and all of those things. So if you want to check those out they're linked down below. So with that being said let's change out my altar and I'm actually probably the most excited about this particular altar. I don't know why, I just want to get into the Yuletide spirit and this feels like the right time to do it.
thing to go on this altar then is incense. Now I have two options. I'm only gonna be using one today, obviously, but then I'm gonna be using the other for the rest of the season. So for today, we're gonna be using this Go Away Evil incense. Now I got this resin incense so long ago, I can't even remember when I got it, and I never needed to use it. But given the fact that 2020 and 2021 have both kind of sucked for the entire world, I figured, you know what, it seems like about the right time to be using it. So I'm going to be using this once today, and then I'll be using it again in January. And I think that's really the only times I'm going to need to use it, unless something specific crops up essentially just as a monthly cleanse during the winter because especially during this time I don't have the windows open as often as I should because you know it's freezing outside so this is going to be really good for just kind of disrupting any of that stagnant energy that's really what I'm using this for the rest of the time I'm going to be using my Keranos incense I love this stuff you saw me use it on a previous altar and I really like it I like using this at this time because I really associate this time of year with Keranos energy I'm not really sure why it's just like this instinctual thing this instinctual feeling and it's just the association that I have with deer and forests and cold and winter and all these things. So I feel the need to use the Keranos incense with the Keranos figure. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm currently heating up my oil warmer so that it will be nice and hot for when I put the incense on it. This is a really good tip, by the way, for anyone who doesn't want to use smoked loose incense, because loose incense gets so smoky, you will set off your fire alarm, which is a little bit hazardous. I like using these kind of oil warmers as incense warmers because they heat the incense, they release any of the vapour from that loose incense so you can smell it, but it doesn't smoke and it doesn't burn it. And I just emptied this last night actually of my Samhain incense and I'm replacing it today with some of this go away evil stuff. Now these kind of oil warmers work best with resin based incense. If your incense is solely herbal, you might find that it goes crispy rather than smelly <laughs> in a good way, smelly in a good way, because the resin is going to melt with heat, whereas herbs are not. So I would typically use this kind of technique with more resin-based incense rather than, say, woods or herbs. You can definitely do a mix, but if it's just woods or herbs, you might find it goes a little crispy. But anyway, I'm going to be doing it with some of this Go Away Evil. But it's essentially small pellets of resin that's been dyed. Now, I'm not much for the fact that it's been dyed, but I have it, so I'm going to use it. So I'm just going to add these onto here. You don't need a huge amount, especially because I'm only going to be using this for today. And I'm just going to let that start to melt and sizzle and do all that good stuff. And then tomorrow, once this is all cooled off, I will empty the top and I will replace it with some of this stuff. Because I love this Keranos incense. It smells so, so good. So, what's actually on this altar? This altar is pretty much like all of the others I've done for the latter half of 2021. I don't know why, I'm just really liking this style of altar at the minute, although I have added more crystals onto it this time than I usually would. So let's start from back to front and work that way, I think that's probably going to be easiest. So right at the back we have the same artwork I had on my last two altars. Now I should really start changing it out and I think that come Imbolg I will change it out to something different. But for whatever reason, I'm just obsessed with this stag art. I'll move this so you can see it better. It's so beautiful. I love it so much. So I will link it in the description box. It's not an affiliate link or anything like that. It's just a link to the artist and a link to the artwork. So that if you like it as much as I do, it's there if you would like to have a look at the artist. I'm obsessed with it. And in this house, you can't really put anything on the walls. I wish I could, but the plastering in old buildings is not great. And in my old building, it's even worse. The plaster is literally peeling off the walls. So you can't actually put anything on the walls, especially not in this room. In the filming room, there is stuff behind me on the wall. And that's the only wall in the entire house that I can put stuff on where it won't fall off. So I like having artwork on altars for that reason. The resin in here is just starting to sizzle as well. I wish I had my microphone so I could like give you like ASMR. I hate ASMR but you know what I mean so you can like hear what it sounds like. So yeah that is the artwork on the altar. I love having artwork in this space because it's really the only place I can put artwork in this room. 
We then have the star on this side. I don't actually know where this is from. I got this as a Christmas gift for my cousin last year and I love it so much. It has a suspended tea light holder in the middle so it looks like the star is glowing from the inside out, especially at night. I love it so much, especially during this season. And it just fits really well with the color scheme I was going for. I was going for like a rustic, white, blue, and brown kind of a thing. So the silver works really well with it. I love it. And then in the center is my horned god statue holding a clear quartz sphere. Now for those of you who were asking on my last altar setup video, these are available in my shop for UK and Europe. I will link it in the description box. I ended up kidnapping mine from the shop because I saw it and I loved him so much I had to keep one. So I do have these in my shop alongside the goddess statues and the other things that I show but I just love this one so much I had to keep him for myself. And inside is a clear quartz sphere. Now I have a few that I switch between, but I just love the color scheme with the smoky, white, misty kind of quartz in it this time. I just, I love it so much. We then have a tea light holder. I've switched out my manifestation tea light holder for a satin spa tea light holder. I really love this just because it glows from the inside out. Like I don't even think from the camera's angle you can see the actual tea light. You can just see it glowing like it's lit up and I, it's so beautiful. It doesn't come out that often, mainly because it does make me feel a little cold because it's like a snowball, but it's just so beautiful. I had to put it on this altar. And then on this side, we have my wand. Now this is my favorite wand. It's the one that I use the most when I'm doing ceremonies, particularly ceremonies and rituals. I rarely use it in spell work, but in ceremonies I do. And it has to go on this altar simply because it's an antler. It's a naturally fallen antler for anyone that's wondering. This has not been collected from an animal that has been harmed. This is a fallen antler that was found in Wales and it's been made into a beautiful wand and I love this thing so it had to go on this altar. Already you can see that this has kind of bubbled and conglomerated into like a gooey mass. It looks kind of like something out of a horror movie, but it smells really nice. Though I know from experience, this is gonna be a pain in the ass to clean. So if you are wondering how to clean this effectively, if you wait for it to cool down and then stick it in the freezer, this will pop out dead easy from the top. And you can also use like a toothpick and just like wedge a toothpick under the edge, flip it, like flick it up so you're using the motion of the toothpick to lift it. And it just pops straight off. Super easy, super convenient. That's why I love using these things, plus they're dead easy to clean. Moving on, we have my hearth protection poppet. She has been on this altar for so long, as I mentioned in every single one of these videos, I'm not going to move her now. She is a protection home hearth guardian poppet that I got about a year, maybe two years ago now, and I love her so much, so she's on this altar. I'm not gonna move her from her home. We then have a few smaller things, so I have my little um, berries. I did have a set of red berries, like red currants, and I cannot for the life of me figure out where I put them. So if I find them at some point during the season, I will add them on here as well. But these are on here instead of my pumpkins. I would put natural foliage, natural greenery, but because this is an old house, the ventilation isn't very good and it gets quite damp. And because of that, anything that's plant-based tends to rot really quickly. So for this time, I am putting on some little fake berries because it's not worth me risking a gooey rotten mess because that will be what happens and I don't wanna have to deal with that. Then we have the cards. Now, this is actually kept upright with an Ikea phone stand. The cards themselves are from the Living Altar Oracle deck. So I'll get it out. It's currently in my most used Oracle card and tarot card drawer. And it is this deck. This is the Living Altar. I have done a deck breakdown on my channel before that I will link in the description box if you would like to see the rest of the cards. But each card represents an aspect of life, whether they be the phases of the moon, um, youth, childhood, adolescence, young adult, adult, um, ancestors, it also goes over the seasons. And so I have chosen the Solitude card because it contains just so much imagery that I associate with winter here in Britain. So I'll get this up. This is the card in question. As you can see, there's a bonfire, there's some holly leaves, 
we've got some floral details and some stitching that have been added into the print and then you've got the pine forest in the background and I just associate this so much with British winter that I had to include it and also a lot of people do find that winter is a time of solitude even though you do have Christmas and Christmas Day you know not everyone interacts with people as often during the winter season I know I certainly don't I am like a little bear I hide inside and hibernate with my heater on so I loved this card and I had to put it on the altar and then we have the winter card. Now this is obviously a lot less detailed than the other one, but I just had to use it for the fact that it's the winter card. This deck contains a card for each of the seasons, so spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Now winter is my least favorite of all of the season cards, but it is really perfectly suited for this also with the browns and the blues and the whites, and it's just it's so pretty, I had to include it. So that's right front and center because this is the one that's gonna stay the same. The other one might change as the season goes on, so like around Christmas time I might switch it out to the family card, but for now it's the solitude card, so these two are both on the altar. And then lastly we have an assortment of crystals. Now I have a wide selection, well a relatively wide selection. I've started using more and more crystals on my altar because I have them. I don't buy more crystals anymore, I've kind of moved past my crystal buying time, that was like 20 14. So I have a large selection of crystals from when I did buy them from a local uh, cult shop and I just decided, you know what, I should use them. There's no point in having them and then have them sitting in a giant chalice inside this cupboard without anyone seeing them or without them being used. What's the point in having something if you aren't going to use it? So I figured, you know what, let's use it. So on here we have a selection. We have some howlite, we have some snow quartz here at the front, we have some snowflake obsidian. The rest of it is clear quartz besides one, which is this. This is a blue stone palm stone from Stonehenge. So the summer solstice and the winter solstice are celebrated at Stonehenge here in the UK. And Stonehenge is made of Priscelli blue stone. And this is Priscelli blue stone made into a palm stone. So this goes on my altar at Letha and it also goes on my altar again at Yule. So this is on here. And I actually did something a little bit different this time because my house is so bitterly cold. It's it's absolutely freezing. I am currently wearing fluffy socks and fluffy slippers and I only took my house jacket off for the purpose of filming this video. So it's very cold. I wanted to bring a little bit of warmth into this space to kind of manifest that a little bit. So I kept all of my crystals for about an hour before I set them up, sat in front of my space heater <laughs> so they can really get that warmth before I added them onto the altar. But yeah, all in all, that is the altar this time. I'm really happy with it. I just felt the need to change. I normally wouldn't change the altar out so soon because it is only the 27th of November. I normally wouldn't change it till maybe the first week of December, but I just felt it was time. It's already snowing here in England and it's cold and it feels like winter, so I need to set up my winter altar. Yes. So I'll leave you with this for a while while I go and warm up in front of my space heater. And then let's talk some more about it in a minute. So that is the altar all set up and I'm so, so happy about it. Now I know that not a huge amount has changed. The artwork is the same, the statue is the same, the resin burner is the same. And the reason for that is mainly because it's just what feels right. In the new year, I'll probably switch it up, change it to something else, just mix up how I do it. But I feel like this is what's right during this 
time of year and I am so happy with it. The incense is going to be switched out tomorrow which is really exciting into my Keranos incense which I absolutely love and then I've managed to bring out my star again. My star actually usually lives in a cabinet on the other side of the room so I've switched out the pumpkin and the star so now my cabinet contains a pumpkin and it's really really cute and all in all I'm just so happy with it. I really like using the things that I don't use that often in my magical practice so in my spell work my rituals. I don't really use crystals that often. I don't really use my living altar oracle very often for readings because it's so big and bulky I really struggle to shuffle it. So when it comes to altars I like using things like this so that it gets them used. I don't see the point in owning something if I'm never going to use it. So I like having these things laid out on the space and it's just made it all feel so cozy and so nice and now I can sit and read at night with my space heater on that looks like a fireplace because they took out all the original features in this house which is really annoying. Like there would have been fireplaces in every room and they just ripped them out and plastered over them and it's like <laughs> sorry off topic but I can just sit at night and read and have my space heater on and have all the candles lit and it's just I'm really really happy with it. Now I always get asked do I do workings on these altars and usually I don't they're mainly just decorative places where I do workings I will do workings wherever I am I will just sit on the floor I actually have a floor cushion like a giant oversized floor cushion that I sit and I do all of my workings on and I will just do it on the floor because I'm incredibly messy and I will nine times out of ten knock something over and it's far easier knocking over like some basil on the floor and just vacuuming it up versus knocking some basil over on a high unit and then it's all down the back and it's down the side and it's everywhere and oh, nightmare. So for me, I like doing my workings on the floor. My surface altars are for manifestation or they are deity altars or they are seasonal altars like this one. If in the future you would like a video of me explaining how I plan my altars, please let me know. I get asked a lot by people why I choose the things I do, and in videos I usually just explain that it's pretty or it's nice, but there's usually some underlying correspondence there that I just intuitively pick up on because I've just been doing this for a while. So if you would like me to break down an altar as to like why I've chosen every individual thing, is it colour correspondence, is it fragrance, is it crystal correspondence or herbal, that that kind of video, please let me know and I will do what I can to do that. Now, as always, thank you so much for being on this channel. If you would like more content from me, I do have a podcast that is all about British folklore and legends. The link to that is in the description box or you can find it on YouTube as Through the Blackthorn Arch. We essentially sit down every week and we talk about a different folklore or legend from British folklore and it's really interesting and I'm so happy with it. I really enjoy the podcast. If you do want to find me on social media, the links are in the description box. There's also a Discord, which is linked in the description box as well. And then I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. You have been absolutely phenomenal. And I really appreciate all the support that you give the channel. I've just done a massive overhaul on the Patreon with new tiers. And I'm planning on getting back into posting content on the Patreon and doing live streams. So if you would like to check that out, the link is in the description box. And all of the names of the supporters who are in the tiers who can have their names on the end screen in just a moment. If you do have any questions, comments, concerns, video ideas, or just want to chit chat with the community, feel free to put it down in the comment section. Have you set up a Yule altar? Are you going to? When do you do it? What are you going to put on it? Please let me know. I would absolutely love to know and it helps to give both myself and everyone else within the community ideas as to what they can do with theirs. And lastly, if you do enjoy the magical content on this channel or in this video, feel free to hit subscribe. I try my best with magical content every single week and I have to learn to enunciate that properly because it's so difficult to speak. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're all staying safe. I hope you have a marvellous magical day and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Mm -hmm.